now we're in front of headquarters. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the TMR 2020, 2020 reunion. reunion. Hi, I'm Frank Rickenbaugh, Vice Chairman of the Alumni Association. Hi. Wish you were here with us. I'm Johannes Kadopes, uh, Chairman of the TMR Alumni Association, and we welcome you to the 2020 reunion. You may not be able to join us, but we wish you were here. Enjoy the show. So now, after Indian Cliffs, we're now in front of the TMR Museum. Welcome, welcome to, to the, the TMR 2020, 2020 reunion. reunion! Welcome to the Kunatot Dining Hall. My name is Frank Rickenbaugh. I was the camp director here from 1977 through 1983. It's great to see some of the staff plaques and troop plaques, a lot of names, a lot of memories. Wish you were here to join in, but uh, we're having a great time reminiscing through the camp. Hi, the building that we're viewing is the main trading post, and formerly it was the grocery store. So we had a, a full stocked grocery store for the family camp, plus the trading post items, camp memorabilia, uniform parts. Uh, of course, you had your candy, and you could actually, in this building, get a a hamburger, french fries, and ice cream sundaes. Michael Blosen, Danny Bastovich, Eric Hertenstein, Tom Boot. Uh, You're good. Uh, who is this? Neil Hock. Um, Gary Rivers. I remember quite a few of the names. Yeah. This is uh, uh, Eric Hertenstein. Huh. Yeah, he passed away. What a crew. <laughs> COVID-19 coronavirus has led to many historic firsts throughout the world. This summer, our beloved scout camps will not be in operation for the first time. The decision to not operate summer camps this July and August is not an easy one. We've come to this conclusion only after exhausting every other option possible. Baden Paul once said, outdoor adventure is a promise made to every scout when they join scouting. And it is because of our commitment to that promise that we have explored every option prior to making this announcement. But right now, as the Scouts we are, it is important that we take all appropriate steps to keeping our families, Scouts, and communities safe. That need for safety has been our guiding force in all our decision making over these past two months. We know that one of the many reasons Scouts and their families spend the year looking forward to a summer camp experience is because of the opportunities for personal accomplishment and our own individual historic firsts. Whether it's learning to swim, earning their first badge, overcoming a fear, building their first fire, or completing that last mile or final lap and a trip down the water slide. While our resident camps are not operating, our properties are open for families to use for hiking and activities. We know our overnight camping program will return. So that scouts and explorers can experience their own historic firsts again. We hope to see you online this summer. 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 Hi, I'm Michael Drillinger, 
chair of the Ten Mile River Scout Museum. I'm really happy to be here today with Johannes and with Wayne, and I'm really glad you're here too. In the next hour, you may hear some familiar voices, see some familiar faces, and despite the pandemic, discover that a lot has been going on around Ten Mile River this summer. Hello, I'm Wayne Holmes, Director of Camping with the Greater New York Councils, and I would like to welcome you to the Ten Mile River Reunion Alumni Day. Thank you very much for being with us and welcome. I wanted to share with you some updates on our summer camping programs, successes we had this summer, as well as our plans moving forward. Summer camp was a success at our properties this year. We successfully ran family camp at Ten Mile River around Lake Nyankyu, a day camp at Camp Alpine, and a great movie night experience every Saturday night all summer at Pouch, continuing into the fall. I'd like for you to watch our next short video about our family camping programs and successes here this past summer at Ten Mile River. The family camp staff did a fantastic job running a socially distanced program that was great for all of our attendees. My name is Michael O'Brien. I am honored to serve as a scouter with the Greater New York Councils, but my biggest job by far is being a husband and a father. Our family had the privilege of attending TMR's family camp for the first time this summer and are grateful to the entire camp staff for creating such a wonderful experience. We all quickly found our favorite things to do in camp. My favorite thing was the lifeguards and the playground. I really liked becoming friends with the lifeguards and going on a boat anytime I wanted to. I really liked jumping into the lake and finding really cool animals. And we have signed up to spend several more weeks with our new friends in the summer of 2021. We, we hope, hope to see you there! there. Hi everyone, Mitchell Slepian, Chappie, camper and staff in the 80s, and also former Chief of Aquahungian Lodge Number 112 and current TMR Scout Museum Vice Chairman. Welcome to Alumni Day. We also had great success with our TMR Go Virtual Scouts BSA program throughout the summer, where we had hundreds of scouts participate in merit badges, asynchronously through Google Classrooms, working on many different advancements, as well as live sessions each day with experts in their fields to talk about many different parts of the scouting program and fun activities to include things like our high adventure bases, working on staff at our camps, and much more. We also offered our Cub World Beyond program, which was an experience for Cub Scout age youth to participate in camp-like activities at home. They ordered boxes that we shipped out to them that included 20 activities, so four weeks of camp program where they could do a different activity each day along with their parent or guardian, work along at home, post videos, and share their successes on our social media, which is a great success. There's more to come on that, as you will hear about very soon with our Cub World rank boxes that will be taking part this fall for you and your dens to take advantage of very soon. Scouting at Home is the online destination for on-demand activities and resources. On our site, you'll find fun and mentally engaging projects to keep you working toward advancement from home, on the go, or anywhere. Scouts BSA will find instruction and inspiration in our Advancement Academy, where counselors have designed course clusters that combine related subjects to delve deeper for a practical education experience. Using the latest e-learning technology allows our courses to be accessible anytime. 
Interested scouts will go beyond the badges and will receive scouting at home course certification and patches upon completion. Families can subscribe to the Bobcat Box service for ready to use activity and craft kits designed with Cub Scout Adventures in mind. Imagine the fun of unboxing a monthly delivery with a ready to assemble project like a birdhouse for you and your Cub Scout to build together. Thanks for checking out our site. We know you'll find it helpful and we hope you'll make us a part of your scouting journey. Hello, my name is Anthony Zalak and I am the Assistant Camp Director of Camp Aquahunga. I've been on staff at Camp Aquahunga since 2003. I would like to welcome everybody to this first ever virtual alumni day. Enjoy. Greetings to everyone on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Welcome to the 2020 reunion as we celebrate 100 years of the Order of the Arrow in New York City. As a youth, I was three times elected to be Chapter Chief of Katanka and then twice elected Lodge Chief of Swanakee. I was then elected to be Section Chief of NE3A. Perhaps this makes me the longest running chief in the history of GNYC. And because of that, it, I'm particularly thrilled to introduce the Supreme Chief of the Fire, Ethan Drady. As Chief Executive of the Greater New York Councils, Ethan stewards the most exciting council in America. Prior to arriving in New York, Ethan served as Chief Scout Executive of the Baltimore Area Council, the Jersey Shore Council, and the Northeast Council of Pennsylvania. Prior to being a Chief Scout Executive, he also served the Crossroads of America Council and the Ocean County Council. It is a thrill for me to now turn the mic over to Eagle Scout Ethan Drady. Ethan? Good morning, Ten Mile River alumni reunion. Hi, this is Ethan Drady, Scout Executive for your Greater New York Councils. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for your effort, for your advocacy, and for many of you, your hard work during one of the most difficult periods in not only scouting's lifetime, but uh, the health of our nation and our world's lifetime. Um, I want you to know that um, our year-round staff, as well as our summer staffs, are already hard at work planning to get ready for the 2021 season at 10 Mile River Scout Camps. Along with our president uh, for Greater New York Councils, Ricky Mason, and Eagle Scout himself, we're all working as hard as we can to be as efficient as we can with scouting's resources during these most difficult times. Really, thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your strength and your wisdom, your ideas. They're very, very important to each and, one of, each and every one of us. They are to me. Um, I hope you have a great reunion, and thanks so much for logging on. God bless you all. Hello, my name is Larry Fenner. I started my scouting experience in 1948 at the age of eight. I became an Eagle Scout in 1955 at the age of 15. I also attended Ten Mile River from the years 1952 to 1956, Division I, Katoki. My last year was in 1956. At that time I was on staff as the Camp Bugler. We made it to now uh, Stag Hill. Stag Hill is the location of what had been uh, the Queen's Council Camp, Camp Man. It opened in 1930. At that time, uh, there were many camps that had an eternal flame. It went by different names. Uh, the Fire of Cheer. We know of one uh, at Camp Brooklyn in Kahnawake. Uh, when they moved to TMR, Shishuga still kept the light uh, glowing and built a pavilion. A fire would be lit on the first day of summer camp and it would represent the joy, the cheerfulness, the friendships, that kind of bonding experience here at camp. And then on the last day of camp it would be extinguished and the spirit of uh, cheerfulness would be brought back home. And then in 1936 Swanakee decided that there should be an everlasting fire here at Camp Man. They lit the first fire in 1936 it probably was on this location or somewhere close to here. There was an Indian ceremony coming across Crystal Lake. But over the course of that 
very summer of 1936, the director and the, the council executive decided to build something more substantial. This was, you know, a, a point of pride. They, they asked one of the scoutmasters, A.G. Jeffrey, um, was asked to design something. And he was an engineer with Bell Labs, Troop 17, and Elmer's Queens. And he came up with this idea. And they sent out a campaign to collect stones. And they thought if everyone contributed stones, it would symbolize this uh, cheerfulness and this cooperation. Frank can point out a couple. I have Pennsylvania, uh, Iowa, Vermont, Utah, New Jersey. Uh, there's even one here from Camp Simonoy. Uh, some foreign countries, Mexico, Chile. Uh, uh, have sent stones, so it, it's friendship from scouting all over the country and even around the world. This tower is, is also synonymous with the Order of the Arrow, and we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Order of the Arrow in New York City. And uh, one of the projects that we'd like to do is to uh, rehab the tower and bring it back to its original glory by adding the, the, the second tier onto the top. So that's a project that we're working on now. What happened was there was an act of vandalism. Uh, I know from my vigil ceremony in 1979, everything was here. We had the flame, we had the bust. Uh, Jack used to tell this story of how it was a bust of his uh, brother because he was a camp man camper in the 30s. And that when Norman Rockwell came to TMR, he, carved a bust of uh, Jack's brother. Well, there's no known sculpture by Norman Rockwell. And Norman Rockwell never did come here, come here. but Jack told great oh, stories. Oh, absolutely great stories. But with every great story, there's a kernel of truth. <laughs> because the original bust was very much like the bust on the cover of the Boy Scout Handbook in 1936. And that profile was done by Norman Rockwell. And so in 86, when Swanicky went to restore the bus with his current bus, for security reasons, I think they felt it would be more secure if it was mounted directly onto the base of the tower. But really, the whole point of the tower is to host an eternal flame. That's part of the reason why uh, this whole reunion referred to as rekindle the flame. This is part of it. Rekindling the flame also is a metaphor for us not being able to see each other. So if we look at the, uh, the dedication materials, they all talk about the friendships across the reservation. And I think we're all part of the Alumni Association because of that spirit of friendship. You know, folks are, are watching this from all over the country, and uh, we want your spirit to be here also. That's why we want to bring the spirit flame back and add the second tier back on and get the eternal flame uh, lit again. So. The bigger project is also landscape improvements. You know, you're looking at the tower now, but it's really a history of a whole Stag Hill, and there had been a large uh, building called uh, Stag Hall, and this was built in reference to that hall, but it was on center, and then as you exited the hall, it cascaded down, you had the tower, and then you walked down the path, and then you had, what's quite interesting is a bronze stag. Um, where did the bronze stag come from? It actually, it actually comes from uh, something that predates uh, FDR and TMR and goes back to George Van Allen, who had this property prior to 1916. And he had this club called the Sullivan County Turtle Club. And there was a bunch of wealthy printers and lithographers. And they would come here for a week to drink, enjoy, hunt. And so it was a rich man's clubhouse, and then they got this Elks Club bronze elk, just like the one on Queens, Queens Boulevard. It sat actually just about here initially, in front of Stag Hall. And then uh, when this was built, they decided to locate uh, the Tower Friendship Pier. And the stag was then turned around to face the lake, and it existed until uh, the mid-40s. We don't know really what happened, but we have photos through the 40s of it. And so this landscape is a series of levels, and then if you know the site, it cascades right into Crystal Lake and this beautiful relationship uh, tying the lake, the landscape, the tower, and what had been Stag Hall uh, behind us. Is it, we do now have a, a, a lodge house.
So, yeah, thank you. ourselves, but in learning, we're providing an object lesson for a lot of other people. And I'm glad, too, to see that you've adopted the NRA insignia. Did it on straight. <laughs> and when you come right down to it, the NRA is based on the same fundamentals that scouting is based on. In other words, trying to do something for the other fella and not trying to do somebody. It's based on cooperation. You know what that means. It's based on the spirit of service. And it's going to work, just like scouting has worked. But I suppose that I have to be getting along on my way. about the old TMR campsite by Alan Yanoff. We can still come back to TMR. We can still encounter the same lush forest and see the friends of our youth. We can still get a whiff of the smoke in the air. The nostalgia of our yesterdays still exists up at the old TMR campsite. Just want to give a shout out to everybody, all my fellow 10 Mile River alum today. I wish I could be with all of you in person as we are every year and as I've been for the last 20 some odd years since I've been on the museum committee, but unfortunately it wasn't in the cards this year. So I'm hoping that we'll all be together again next summer and hopefully in not too many months from now. My name is Michael O'Brien and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the lodge advisor for Kintakoying Lodge, the Greater New York Council's branch of Scouting's National Honor Society. Chief Alexander and I appreciate the invitation to join today's event and support the ongoing restoration work at the Tower of Friendship. While this year's centennial of the Order in New York City is different from what any of us had envisioned, I am very proud of what our chief, officers, and other youth leaders are working so hard to accomplish. Their efforts to support TMR are a fitting way to mark this momentous occasion and preserve our shared legacy of service to the youth of our city. We have all missed our beloved TMR this summer, and we hope you will labor with us to fill that void by rekindling the flame of brotherhood, cheerfulness, and service in your hearts as we celebrate the history of our camp and help to safeguard its future. 
We thank you for your support, and I hope that you and your families are all staying safe. Hello, and welcome. My name is Alexander Cachado, and I have the great honor and pleasure of serving as 2020 Kintikoing Lodge Chief. Seven years ago, the five great lodges of New York City, Renequa, Manhattan, Shushuga, Akuhangian, and Swanaki, came together to form Kintikoin, or the Crossroads of Nations. Since the merger, we've continued with our mission of bringing brotherhood and cheerful service to New York City. Despite the pandemic, Kintikoin is as busy as ever. With our Power On campaign, we're raising money to pay for one year of heat, electricity, and garbage pickup at Ten Mile River camps. This is one of the ways that we're ensuring that scouting and camping be continually available to youth in New York City for years to come. If you'd like to support our initiative, you can make a donation to our Power On campaign today. We also have many more activities in stock, and we'd love to have you take part in them. I invite all those who have not paid their dues for this year to join us in Kintikoin and become active brothers once again. We would love to have you. So please join Kintikoin and join us in celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Order of the Arrow in New York City. Even though the Ten Mile River Scout Museum did not officially open this summer, our 2020 summer staff of Ira Nagel, Anthony Zalak, and volunteers cleaned, painted, and improved our museum with an eye to next year. We created a virtual tour so that scouts could earn the historian patch, and we've been hosting an ongoing series of webinars. Please watch this. The museum is hosting a series of informative talks, which we hope will be of interest to the general public, as well as the scouts and scouters. Owing to the terrible pandemic that we're all suffering through, our series of talks is being given virtually, and we're thrilled that you're all here to join us. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Um, as Michael had said, that I work for the National Park Service at the Upper Delaware Scenic and Recreational River. Sean Johnson has been the volunteer weekend ranger at Ten Mile River for the past several years. He's also been deeply involved in restoring, remarking, mapping, and promoting the Red Dot Trail at TMR. He's also the co-chair of the TMR Trail Committee. Here now are some clips from a recent webinar he did for the museum called Backpacking the Trails of TMR. Hi, my name is Ira Nagel. I'm Anthony Zalak. On this virtual tour of the museum, you will see all of our major exhibits. At the end, there will be a short quiz. By completing all the requirements, you can earn the TMR Museum Historian Award. Rosa was president of the Boy Scout Foundation from 1922 to 1938 and led the effort to acquire the Tenmo River Scout Camp's property. This photo is of Talqua Lodge, headquarters of the Brooklyn Scout Camps in the 1930s. This showcase contains neckerchiefs, patches, pennants, and artifacts from this period. Brooklyn Scouts were the first to go to the Tenmile River in 1928. They took the Erie Railroad to Tustin Station and hiked to Telequah Lodge to check in for camp. For almost 40 years, the slide farm on Route 97 was operated by Roland Flora and his wife Louise for the purpose of manufacturing hand-carved neckerchief slides. This is the last of the original open-air cabins that were widely used at Tenmile River until the early 1960s. The TMR Monument commemorates all of the scout camps at TMR since it opened in 1928. Hi, this is Ari Nagel. I'm here at the Museum of Tenmar River Scout Camps. Welcome, everybody. The Ten Mile River Scout Museum never would have existed without the vision and support of Carl Robert Bob Matson, Whether it was Camp Pouch 
Alpine and Cub World, director of Camp Kunita, director of the TMR Reservation, and all the other jobs that Bob has held in Greater New York Council. He has always been dedicated to the scouting program and to the benefit of the scouts. It is with great pleasure that I introduce my friend, Bob Matson. Hi, and thank you for inviting me to the 2020 Ten Mile River Alumni Association gathering. Uh, amazing times uh, doing this virtually is certainly different. I wish I could be in person to meet and greet each of you today. I've been asked uh, just to share uh, some of the history and highlights of my 35 years with the Greater New York Councils. As some of you may be aware, all of you are aware, I retired as of the end of March this year. I have continued to do some things with the council um, in the transition of my responsibilities and some special projects. That'll end in September of this year. I started as a ranger in the Alpine Scout Camp. It was a wonderful experience for me, an introduction to the Greater New York Councils. Um, I met some amazing scouters and staff there that certainly affected the, the rest of my career and in turn the scout program that was delivered in all of our camp operations and throughout the council over the years. Certainly want to recognize a couple people, uh, Frank Rick and Bob Lex Jarvis in particular. Frank was a director of Alpine and Lex Jarvis a director of support at the time, or director of camping, I guess it was. Um, uh, they both hired me in 1984. Uh, amazing how time flies. I was asked in 1986 to serve as the camp director of Camp Kunita for three years. Uh, again, another wonderful experience, a great learning experience for me in many cases. Um, had the opportunity to work with three of the best camp staffs through the years that I've ever worked with. Uh, many um, uh, superstars amongst that, and I, and I do want to recognize some of them if I can. Um, Specifically, Tom Jeffries was the program director, Ian Lillian, Jason Lillian, Ira Nagel. Ira has been a 50-year-plus staff member at Ten Mile River and certainly a fixture and, and a dedicated person uh, in scouting in Queens. Uh, Father Barry, uh, Barry Frazita, uh, for those who remember, uh, Father, he passed away. He was a chaplain in Kunita and very active in the OA, Queen Scouting, um, and, and the Catholic uh, Committee in both Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, Rabbi Purton, uh, Rabbi Bamberger, Dave Edelman, uh, Gene Berman, uh, Hannibal Sullivan are some of the other names that jump out that were very engaged in the staff for those years and very involved and I, I thank them for everything they do in scouting. Um, some real key volunteers and scouters that made the success of Kunita possible. Uh, the Honorable Charles Posner, Judge Posner was also the chair of the Jewish Committee on Scouting, active scouter in Brooklyn. Uh, just an amazing man. He and his family were very involved in Kunita um, uh, and ensuring that we can deliver a scouting program and fulfill the religious needs of uh, the scouts that attended. Um, very, very positive leader. Um, enjoyed working with him greatly. In addition to Charles, uh, Carl Bernstein, Dave Lalonic, Gene Berman, Larry Lachey, Mike Koretsky, Val Abrams, Jerry Pilot, John Pritchard, um, were just engaged day in and day out with the camp as superstar leaders and certainly provided me guidance, uh, you know, moving along and how we could better the program in our camps. And, and I appreciate that very, very much. Also, the Brooklyn Arrowhead, um, uh, an alumni group from uh, uh, the early years of Camp Kunita and the Brooklyn Division at Ten Mile River. Amazing group of people involved. Um, and, and I really, really uh, thank them for everything they've done over the years. The history they've shared with me has been pretty amazing. Additionally, you know, when it's in Kunita, they still continue to this day. They do a fundraiser from their membership each year to help provide program supplies and better our camp programs in the summer. Certainly made a big difference when I was in Camp Kunita uh, with them uh, providing funding for boats and aquatics equipment um, for, for many years. And thank you for what you did. Served as a director of the Alpine Scout Camp for more than a decade. Uh, with some additional responsibilities during the summer. I had the opportunity to be involved in the design and construction of the Johnny e. Reeves Cub World. Also served as a director of Cub World for four years. I had the opportunity to serve as a director of Ten Mile River, an amazing position uh, for actually three different years uh, in my tenure. A, a big position, a non-stop position in the summertime, but a 
but enjoyed every minute of it. I also had the opportunity to serve as the director of Camp Kiowa, a wonderful program, wonderful staff. I had the opportunity to serve as the director of properties. Uh, one of my favorite roles was the director of properties because I was able to interact uh, directly with our camp rangers, a wonderful group of people that care so much about maintaining our property and delivering a, a caring program. Uh, thank you for everything you do, guys. You've been wonderful to work with over the years. Um, we also had the opportunity to make some very significant improvements over many years. Invested uh, close to $4 million in infrastructure. Much of it people never saw, um, but it needed to be taken care of. And uh, it was a very, very positive time for me. We cleaned up a number of things that we wanted to improve upon for years. I also had the opportunity to be Director of Support Service and uh, Director of Camping and the Chief Financial Officer for the Great Air Councils. All wonderful positions. But most importantly, I had the opportunity to work with many board members, key scouters of the Greater New York Councils to further the mission of scouting here in New York City. Thank you all for it work with, that I work with. Um, I also want to just call out some people that made a difference in, in my life in scouting, uh, enabled me to, to do some things I didn't know I could do uh, in many cases. Um, I'm just going to share the names. There are many others that should be recognized here. Um, but I'm, I'm just not able to get through the whole list. My apologies if I neglected to, to read your name off. Uh, Tony Godalis. Tony was the ranger in the camp I grew up with. I uh, grew up in Connecticut, uh, became the ranger at Camp Pouch, encouraged me to come down and come visit the Greater New York Councils. Um, and I'm glad he did. He was the reason I ended up joining the staff at Alpine. Uh, Lex Jarvis, um, just a super director, support service, super scout, a wonderful person to work with for many, many years a true scouting professional. Charlie Rosser, the scout executive here for many years, who I got to know very, very well, and uh, you know, ultimately promoted me into the director of camping positions of the last three positions I've had here with the council. A wonderful mentor, uh, I miss him dearly. Uh, Ethan Drady, our current scout executive, Ethan has been wonderful to work with, a true program scout executive that uh, wants to do nothing but move the council forward. Uh, Frank Rickenbaugh, again, Frank, who was a, a very active queeter, uh, Queen Scouter for many, many years. Um, and uh, certainly look forward to working with him in the future in alumni capacity. But great to work with in Alpine, great to work with as a volunteer, very engaged in the Friends of Ten Mile River. Um, just a, a pleasure. Uh, Monsignor Tony Marchitelli, um, Dick Cortez. Dick, uh, for those of you who know, was very involved in Queen Scouting and probably still is with Camp standards. He was the camp master coordinator at Alpine for a decade or more. Just an amazing man. Thank you for all you've done. Uh, Father Barry Frazina, um, just a wonderful chaplain. Uh, will be missed or is missed. Walter Carey was ranger at Alpine, the best man at my wedding. Um, just a great person to work with over the years, super personality and great scouter. Uh, Mark and Joe Matricola, Gene Berman, Stephen Jan Schwartz from the Rannick Law Foundation and just super scouters from the Bronx. We thank you for everything you do to help the scouts from the Bronx attend camp. And personally, to be my friend and uh, to help out every time I pick up the phone and call you with some strange mission. Thank you for all you do. Uh, Michael Drillinger, congratulations on assuming the museum from Gene Berman. Um, you've done an amazing job along with all of the trustees of the museum. Thank you for uh, all you do. Joe Bradley, uh, Rich Panini. Rich was a properties chairman uh, for a number of years with me, super scouter, does more behind the scenes than most people realize. I would like to thank Giannis Knoops for his efforts as our council alumni chairman in putting these alumni events together the last few years. Giannis has helped move Ten Mile River forward and uh, perpetuate the history of the Ten Mile River Scout Camps. David Malotsky has been involved in scouting in Ten Mile River for decades. I've had the honor of working with him on a number of projects. David, thank you for everything you do. Um, so just some of the highlights. Uh, and lastly, I really want to thank uh, my daughter Jennifer and my wife Jerry for all that they do behind the scenes to support me and the number of hours and days I'm not around to support them uh, because our, in our camps are involved in our scouting program. Thank you both for all you do. Uh, in closing, I just want to share that I'm an Eagle Scout and an alumni. I'll continue to do everything I can to support our camping programs in New York. Uh, and thank you, most importantly, for everything you do. 
Hope to see you in person next year at Ten Mile River. Have a great day. Thank you. It's Joe Verone, camper and scout leader in Kunatar and Kiowa for many summers. I cannot begin to tell you the profound effect scouting in GNYC and Ten Mile River has had on my life, both in values and in friendships. Wishing all the alumni continued good health and praying to see everyone up at TMR in the near future. Good morning and welcome to the virtual Ten Mile River Alumni Reunion. I'm Stephen Benini, former Ten Mile River camper and staff and vice chair of the Ten Mile River Alumni Association. We're gonna take a moment to look back at last year's very significant celebration of the 90th anniversary of Camp Ranaqua, which included the dedication of a newly refurbished dining hall. We have great highlights. We'll take a moment to look back and enjoy them. Hi, my name is Bob Matt. I was a camper at Temal River back in the early 1960s. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my camping experience. I was a camper at Tema River from 1960 to 1963. And in 1964, I was a CIT at, at Tema River. The entire time, except when I was a CIT, I was at Camp Nyanku. Uh, when I was a CIT, I spent half my time at Nyanku and half my time at Camp Kunata. The camp, I was a member of uh, Troop and, and Post 107 in Far Rockaway, New York, and we used to come up to Ten Mile River as provisional campers. Those were the 19, early 1960s was the heyday of camping at Ten Mile River. They had four two-week sessions. All the sessions were full. There must have been 11 or 12 camps around the uh, reservation. And it was, it was a major part of my growing up. And I, I'm happy to say I've stayed involved in scouting. Both my kids were, children were in scouting. And now my grandchild is a Cub Scout here in Connecticut. Uh, my, my greatest memories growing up as a teenager were those spent at Ten Mile River. I'm so happy to participate in this alumni event and hopefully next year we'll be able to do it in person. Thank you. Greetings from David Lalonic, former Kunatar and Chappie camper, Chappie staff man, Kunatar staff, TMR staff, and eventually Chappie uh, Scoutmaster from 1971 all the way to 1988. Some of the best years of my life. Be well, everyone. We have some updates about hiking at Ten Mile River, where we're going to be showing you a short video about some of our TMR trails opportunities. I'd like to thank uh, Sean Johnson, one of our volunteer weekend rangers, and David Malatsky of the TMR Museum for the hard work and dedication they have put forward in pushing this project forward, making the trails accessible to our units, and ways that you and your troop could come out and hike at Ten Mile River. We have a short video to show you a father and son who hiked with us this spring, Noel Carcino and his son, who circumnavigated the entire Red Dot Trail as a family. Some great content ahead. Take a look.
happy summer of 2020 to all Kiowa family and friends of yesterday and today. We hope that the future brings excitement, full of scouting and all sorts of fun. A special shout out to Troop 253 of Flushing, Queens and female Troop 253 of Flushing, Queens. We hope to be enjoying Kiowa once again. And this goes to all scouts out there to a very happy and prosperous fall season for all of you. It's Hal Rosenfeld. And uh, in my 15 seconds, I want to say 74 years of scouting, 70 of which uh, Boy Scouting and TMR uh, allows me to have cherished memories, cherished friendships, and cherished values. Blame it all on scouting. Hi there, Michael again. As chairman of the Ten Mile River Scout Museum, one of the things I do at Alumni Day is induct honorees onto the TMR Wall of Fame. These are people, living or deceased, for whom commemorative tiles have been created during the year to honor them and their good works, especially with regard to scouting and Ten Mile River. The honorees that we're gonna be recognizing today will be inducted again, hopefully at a live reunion in 2021. And the uh, TMR reunion, in 2021 will be one where all of the friends and family members will be invited to attend. Our first honoree that I would like to recognize is Ann Mannix. Ann was a vital part of the Catholic Committee on Scouting for many years. She was a pleasure to work with and was extremely gracious, helpful, and supportive. Ann served as Cub Master and den leader of PAC-22. She received the Silver Fawn Award, District Award of Merit, St. George Award, Cub Scouter Award, Bronze Pelican Award, Scouters Training Award, and Scouters Key Award. We are pleased and proud to induct Anne. Our next inductee will be Frank Sofo. In his 70 plus years in scouting, Frank served as scoutmaster, troop committee chair, merit badge instructor, and scouting coordinator. He was associated with PAC Troop and Crew 23, St. Edmund's Roman Catholic Church, Brooklyn. Frank received the Distinguished Eagle Award, Cub Recognition Plan Award, Arrowhead of Honor, District Scouter of the Year, Award of Merit, God and Country Award, Cub Scouter Award, Den Leader Award, Scouter Trainer Award, American Legion Scouter of the Year, Order of the Arrow Vigil Honor, Chauffeur Award, Bear of the Cross of St. George, Cub Scout Leader Award, Scouter Award, Trainer Key, Wood Badge Award, Brotherhood of Faith, Prophet Elias Award, and the Bronze Pelican Award. As Brooklyn Dean of Eagles, Frank had more Eagle Scouts to his credit than any other advancement chair in the nation. He humbly assisted countless young men to achieve Eagle Scout rank. The next inductee will be Reverend Barry Frazitia, more lovingly known as Father Barry, he was a key part of TMR, Queen's Scouting, and Sawanaki Lodge in the 1980s and 1990s. He was TMR chaplain from 1997 to 1995, Queen's Activities Chairman, Chaplain, Catholic Committee on Scouting, Pioneer District Chairman, and Associate Lodge Advisor of Sawanaki Lodge. Father Barry received the Silver Beaver Award, District Award of Merit, St. George Award, Bronze Pelican Award, Order of the Arrow Founders Award, and Vigil Honor. He received the Outstanding Scouter Award of Excellence Award from the Jack Kohler Sawanaki Campership Association. Father Barry was a spiritual and emotional healer, chaplain, friend, confidant, an individual of perpetual grace, a spiritual advisor, and a good-natured human being.
who was always willing to listen without judgment. Our next inductee is Joseph Van Aken. Joseph was a gentle giant of deep faith whose heart was as big as his frame. He was the quintessential scoutmaster and Eagle Scout who exhibited exemplary behavior and leadership. He was able to make deep inroads with both handicapped scouts and in the Asian community during a period when such progress was unprecedented. Joseph remained pleasant and in good humor, true to his faith and principles of scouting and his family and friends. In loving memory, we recognize members of the Catholic Committee on Scouting, Scoutmasters, Scouts, and Scouters, especially Paul D. Stanton, Eagle Scout and beloved chairman of the Brooklyn Queens Catholic Committee on Scouting. The fire they nurtured so lovingly in their hearts still warms us today. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to their unfinished work. We induct Leonard Marcus, lovingly known as Lenny, into the 2020 TMR Hall of Fame. Lenny was a beloved founding member of the Brooklyn Arrowhead. He was always ready with a helpful hand or encouraging comment. He was a man of conviction and great personal integrity. Lenny was a graduate of Brooklyn Tech, Brooklyn College, and Brooklyn Law School. He saw possibilities where the rest of us saw need. He was a man of action, not just words. Lenny loved us all and we loved him back. Lenny embodied the idea of who serves his fellow is of all his fellows greatest. It is with great pride we induct all of these honorees into the 2020 TMR Wall of Fame. And we hope all of you will join us live and in person when we do the 2021 and we honor these fine scouters again. Maintaining and preserving Ten Mile River would not be possible without the help of these organizations. We are grateful for all of their good work and contributions. I'm Wayne Holmes, Director of Camping, here to tell you about some camping updates in the Greater New York Councils. Welcome back. Many of our troops who were supposed to camp with us this year at Ten Mile River and our PACs who were supposed to be with us at Cub World, the whole of places you put down for the 2020 summer, that you've moved the 2021 summer are still in place. You'll be getting a confirmation of your reservation in your week as a reminder in the coming weeks, so you can prepare for a great summer at our properties next year, where we plan to be back running in full for a great season in 2021. The TMR Legacy Unit Program is still in place for those units that we launched in 2019 as year one, 2020 counts still as year two and 2021 will be year three so more information on that is on our website and as we send out those hold a place reminders those units that qualify will know they are part of the unit legacy program another great option for your unit is hiking coming out and doing a day hike at 10 mile river alpine or pouch you can visit our website for information on how to reserve a hiking opportunity for your family or your unit it's also a great opportunity to come work on the TMR Trails Historical Medal and hike at Ten Mile River on some of our day hikes and simple loop hikes with your unit. More information on that is also on the Ten Mile River website. Planning a great 2021 summer at Ten Mile River. We hope that you can join us or that your troop can join us. There's lots of great information on our website about our 2021 programs. Our calendar is posted. We plan to run our normal camping programs 
anyone who's placed a hold of place from 2020 to 2021, that hold of place is good. You'll be getting some emailed information about that shortly. We're also preparing Camp Alpine and Camp Pouch for family camping this fall. We will begin family camping in mid-September. You'll see an email announcement about that in the coming week with some information about how you and your family can come out and camp without your unit at campsites and cabins at both Alpine and Pouch. We'll be opening that very soon. There are some rules and regulations that come along with that, like rosters, medical forms, and social distancing guidelines that you'll need to follow if you'd like to camp with us. There will be detailed information out about that next week. Keep an eye out for it with our launch. We're also planning for units to be able to meet at camp for their usual evening meetings or day meetings where you can't meet at your chartered organization or where you usually meet because of social distancing, you can come meet at one of our camp properties by reserving a pavilion or campsite just to use for a few hours with your unit meeting. Pricing information with that is available on our website. We would also like to help tell you about camp in the future. If you want us to join your virtual meeting, one of our summer camp staff members or someone from the camping team to come tell you about what our camp programs will be next summer, we'd be happy to join your virtual meetings this fall or spring and tell you about our great programs at our camping properties. Although he hates to take credit, this program would not have been possible without the hard work of David Malatsky. Thank you, David. Wayne, Johannes, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks. But next year, I hope we're all doing this in person at TMR. Thank you both for your incredible hard work putting this great show together. It was wonderful to be a part of it. I really enjoyed it. I'd like to thank David Malotsky for the tremendous amount of work he's done towards this reunion. I'd like to thank Mitchell Schlepien. I'd like to thank Stephen Benini. I'd like to thank Frank Rickenbauer for all their work. And of course, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Wayne, for making this so much fun. See you at the next reunion. Don't forget, if you'd like to purchase a participant patch or one of those FDR six inch jacket patches with the TMR alumni on it, you can find them at the registration link. That's our 2020 TMR show. If you missed the link to the Zoom breakout calls after this, go back to the email you got when you click the link for this YouTube video or back to 10milerever.org slash alumni for the links to those Zoom calls. See you there.